Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Exclu Show here on our YouTube channel. We are in the middle of a Spider-Man month, so we figured, why the hell not, let's open with a Spider-Man special. Joining me for the very first show is, of course, our very own Trevor, 1-6 Shooter. Say hello, Trevor. Hello, Trevor. There we go. So let's just give you the rundown of what you can expect from the show, both internally for this one and going forward, because it is something we'd like to be doing Perhaps every week, every fortnight, we're just going to see how it goes. Let's pan it out. So coming up on today's episode, we are going to be having a look at the PS4 Spider-Man, the Scarlet Spider, who is, of course, a Toy Fair exclusive. We're going to be figuring out where the hell the, toy, uh, the Hot Toys Vulture went, um, rounding up a few news and previews over the last few days. And we're going to close out with another look at whether we'll see a 1-6 Mysterio. So let's just get straight into it um, with the first topic of the day, which is, of course, the Hot Toys Spider-Man Advance. So, you know, Trevor, what were your initial thoughts, mate, when you saw this? Well, it's great looking. I mean, I didn't play the game. Uh, I think I'm the only person on earth who didn't play the game. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a PS4, so, you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lousy Xbox user. <laughs> um, but uh, it's beautiful. I mean, these are, these are all great. I, I can't see them stopping with these things. Uh, and this was the first one out of the box, right? Or was it the Rockstar one? Uh, I, I'm not too sure. There, there are three. So, yeah, we've got this now. one. We've got the Spider-Punk. Um, I'm trying to think, whether, and obviously the Scarlet Spider, obviously we'll get to as well. So yeah, there's three so far. Um, so obviously this guy, all this information is taken from sideshow.com. We will have all the links, everything you see throughout the show uh, will be down in the description below. So yes, this is going to retail for two hundred and fifty-one dollars. Now you obviously collect more one six than I do. So where does that sit for you? Is that something you know a mainline release? Is that a bit more than normal? Two fifty, man. That's that's the sweet spot now. I mean, that's what things right. are coming for. So, you know, a hot property like this. Um, I, I I really think this was the first one out of the box. So I guess you know they're pretty confident in the accessories with this thing, and we'll take a look. Yeah. At it. But uh, two fifty for all the stuff you get, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so again, touching on the accessories, there are. Um, some really cool ones here. Um, yeah, I think you were right. This was the first one out of the box. Obviously, just coming off the back of the success of the game. Obviously, we've seen a lot of people now comparing Spider-Man to the Iron Man. Is this going to be the next, you know, Iron Man for Hot Toys? Oh, Are we going to see sure. years worth of releases? I mean, yeah, of course, I, I completely sure. agree. Um, so yeah, this guy is going to have thirty points of articulation, which you know, when you look across a lot of these guys, that's pretty standard. Um, so nothing too out of the ordinary there. Um, Twelve pairs of hands again at Spider-Man. That's to be expected. All the different poses, different web slinging. That's, you know, to be expected. So we just have another closer look here. This is the full roundup image, obviously courtesy of Hot Toys. So you can see there um, all the different accessories that he does come with. Something to note as well, actually, the um, spider sense. I don't know if you've seen it, mate. The spider sense, I think, has been tweaked ever so slightly from this image to the actual in-hand stuff. Um, obviously, this has... We've seen, we've seen a few, few people now have this um, in hand in their collections. Um, so quite an interesting thing while I've tweaked down, not too sure why that is. Um, but yeah, I mean, the spider plushie, he's obviously got quite a lot of attention. I've seen quite a few people who are quite happy That's to have him. Fun. Yeah, um, but again, when you look at this compared to other Spider-Man releases, I mean, yeah, you can have the webbing, of course. You can have the web trails. Like we said, the hands. Um, the stand, of course, generic thing would you get with all of these. Um, the eye pieces here, I don't know what you feel about there. How, how do you feel about the additional eyes that you can switch out? Oh, it's great. I mean, you like I them definitely ones? want them. Uh, you know, I guess these are specific to the game, so yeah. you know they look they look a little more animated, a little more comic booky. But uh, yeah. you know, I dig them; they're cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just somewhere like that middle one. I don't know what it is on the on the top there, that middle of the three. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whether that one. Of course, I know the image perhaps isn't so great. It was hot it's toys. It's a weird sometimes. transition. They don't they don't yeah. look like they're wide enough. I don't know. I, Overall, with this thing, it's it's interesting. I think out of all of these that I've seen so far, this is probably my least favorite of the the video game ones so far. Right. Okay. Yeah. So again, I I guess that probably is how do I say it? Not to be expected, but obviously this being the default, let's say the standard suit. You know, this is just mm -hmm. the benchmark. Everything mm -hmm. else is like the Spider Punk is obviously something a bit more different, a bit more out there. Yeah. Um, all those individual suits can have their own niches. They're all going to be a bit more kind of entertaining. But yeah, like you say, um, straight out, you know, straight out the doors. Obviously, like I say, there's confidence in the price point. Um, the figure looks great. Um, so yeah, a competent, you know, release. Um, so yeah, just a final kind of image here of this guy. Um, again, something always 
I always see a lot in the comments and people just kind of generally discussing online is how able these guys are to get into the poses that you yeah, see in the toys. Not. They yeah, are. I mean, that's the thing. That, and you don't want to leave them in those poses. Uh, that's why you see a lot of people with them in just a museum pose. Yes. Uh, in the, in their detolf or whatever, because uh, that th those those creases will never. Yeah, I mean, that's the, it's I think that's just material to the point yeah. where it, just, it looks all loose and stuff. So well, that's like the uh, the Iron Spider, wasn't it? Costume, um, yeah. yeah, the Iron Spider, I think, had that kind of issue. I saw that was even worse. Around. I think, yeah. yeah, I think that was worse because of the nature of that material. Material was different. Yeah, um, I know um, Alex Brooks, um, BG Toy Art. For those of you that don't know, um, obviously he's a Hot Toys photo blogger um, and a columnist actually as well in our magazines. I know he does a lot of these um, shots. I did see him actually the other day. Um, I think somebody put the question to him about how. I can't remember whether it was this figure or another one. I think it may have been the Flash, actually. Um, he was, you know, explaining that, yes, he could actually achieve that pose, you know, because yeah. everyone is always, well, these Hot Toys ones, are, you know, they're heavily photoshopped. Well, you know, I think it's interesting to see that sometimes they're not so much, you know, photoshopped and sometimes they are more natural. Like you say, you probably could get this guy in the position. Would you keep oh. him? You know, probably not. You're not going to be doing it for... Period you can push them to the limit, but you're going to, you know, if you're, you're a person who's worried, about, I'm, I'm not as much. I mean, I take care of my figures, but, you know, I'll, if I want them in a pose for a shot or something like that, I'm going to put them in a pose. You know, I'm going to like yeah, yeah, push exactly. it to the limit and then just not leave it like that. You just can't leave it like that. So Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, our first topic. So just have a jump to something a little bit different. So this is the Beast Kingdom homemade so suit egg attack. He is, yeah. Um, now, we haven't really seen much from Beast Kingdom when it comes to the egg attacks. Recently, they've been doing a kind of subline, which is a static statue, which they've actually had a homemade suit, um, Spider-Man, as part of that line. I mean, yes, like, you know, like I said at the top there, it's cutesy, it's very fun, it's very stylized. Um, the interesting thing to point out here, it's a hard plastic underbody, which is, um, you know, common across all these figures, but the accessories on top are cloth. So very much like the Mezco, yeah. you know, they're kind of championing that kind of cloth outfit, especially, especially on the Spider-Man releases. Um, this guy's obviously following that trend. Um, so he does come with three pairs of eyes as well. You can see there to switch out. Um, 28 points of articulation. Um, these guys are really poseable. It lends itself really nicely to their over-the-top sense of, you know, fun. And that's, whenever I talk about Beast Kingdom, or I think about them, fun is just, you know, the kind of be-all, end-all. You can see that's what they're going for um, and the way they present them as well. They're always about, you know, packing in as much fun um, as possible. Is this something you would ever add to your collection, do you think? Well, I can't get into another another line, but the, I do have, I think I have the Darth Vader from this line um, and it's really yes, cool. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a one-off piece, but uh, you said that we haven't seen a lot from them, but uh, Toy Fair, I saw uh, a lot in the Diamond Select uh, booth. Yeah, so I mean, they've had a few X-Men ones. They've had... I think yeah. we talk about the Magneto, Wolverine. Yeah. There's a lot coming out apparently with this line, so it must be doing well. Um, uh, yeah, I think the initial really ones are cool much... looking. The, the, yeah. Like you said, they're fully articulated for the most part. They, yeah. I mean, look what you can do with them right there with that, just that running pose. It's it's totally cute, man. I could, I could see myself getting into photographing these things, but it's just another thing down the rabbit it's hole. Just another line. Yeah, yeah. It's so like you say, there are they're very cool. X Men characters coming. Like I say, from from Toy Fair that we've seen. So um, get into the X Men. I could definitely get into. Yeah, it. so it's that classic '90s. You know, so it's your vibrant colors, which is the thing that always allows them to stand out. Uh, they have done a lot of MCU stuff as well recently. Mm. I don't know whether it's, uh, hey, maybe these guys have been, you know, pop up, popping up everywhere and just not kind of breaking into the radar. I don't know. Um, they're not something which I see, particularly in our feeds, you know, in the hashtags that we have. Um, it's not something I see yeah. very much of. So I think they are very much a kind of up and coming niche um, collectible. There is a lot of fun to be had here. There's a lot of charm in these guys. I mean, I mean, the price back. point is the price point is you know it's up there it's 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 mezco exclusive yeah it is yeah it really is stuff. so you know i could see it's that's maybe a bit of a barrier to what's kind of a fun figure i mean you've got in that in this sort of same genre you've got pops and you've got yep. cute figs and you've got that um what's the sideshow or hot toys um Cosplay, ba cost babies. Oh, cost babies. Oh, um, mate, do not get me started on those guys. We have a <laughs> I know, I know you have a you have a yeah. bit of a problem with those. Yes. Um, so, which are all lower priced in the same sort of form factor, although they yep. don't have the articulation, obviously, that these do. So, it's tricky. It's a tricky niche to get into, and um, yeah. I think they're really cool. I think at a better price point, I might be more tempted to get a bunch of them. So, 
Yeah, I mean, again, when you look at the accessories, you know, for that price point, you are getting a few pairs of the hands that you can see. The web in the eyes, the stand you always get with these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe it's just a case of just, you know, taking a few more steps to get that next level of awareness. Like you said, obviously, we saw stuff previously at Soy Fair. Um, so hopefully with, with Comic-Con San Diego, of course, just around the corner, um, hopefully we'll have more from them. Um, obviously, we are going to be there. So That's we can have a little look. They need yep. the pictures. They, yeah, there are a few companies on there. You know, obviously we say quite a lot of the time there are a few culprits who yeah. could just use, yeah. you know, better images just to, just, just, just to get their message across a bit clearer, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so nice to see something new from them, guys. I mean, perhaps it's a bit late <laughs> with the Homecoming release. Who knows? But of course, just trying to tie it into the great book for Spider-Man, though, you know what it I mean? Is, and that's the thing. I mean, perhaps we didn't see enough of it. Yeah. Um, Especially you know, for this size, I mean, it was cute. It's a, it's a kind of a cute homemade outfit for him, and on the one six scale, or even on the the legend scale, or whatever, it's cool. But like on a cute figure like this, it's even it's that much cuter. Yeah, it lends itself. Yeah, that aesthetic. Um, yeah, lends itself really nicely. Um, so we transition and have another jump over to perhaps the biggest oh boy. Of our three headliners, which is of course the Scarlet Spider. Now we did see this guy; he was semi-revealed slash previewed i should say as part of a far from home tour over in japan which is pretty damn awesome um so they had lots of prizes lots of different events at different stores going on in japan so a few days after that we then obviously got the full reveal um and following that he has been announced as a toy fair exclusive so again it's that 251 dollar um price point so it's pretty standard i'm guessing again you know for an exclusive maybe i would have expected it to be higher i mean that's just coming from someone who doesn't pick many of these guys up um again the standard 30 points of articulation but what's really doing it here you can see here all the accessories so like i say he's got he's got the cow, coffee cup here the donut the smartphone the pizza box um which has an individual slice which you can take out which is a really nice little touch um so yeah what was your thought when you saw this guy um fully revealed last week yeah again i, I haven't played the game so i think I, i've seen an image of this once or twice from game shots and things like that and it didn't yeah. You know, at first I was I was a little off put by the outfit. I don't know. It looks yeah. like you know, it kind of feels like he's not wearing pants. But it's um, the more <laughs> I look at it, the more I like it, and I, the more I understand why the popularity of this thing and it's huge. And it went up for pre order, and it's already waitlisted. Um, yeah. And I would say, a few days it got waitlisted. Now with every SDCC exclusive, just about, including like the Sith Anakin last year. Um, they'll 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 waitlist very quickly, yeah. and then they'll come back out and they'll be up for pre order again. And and now you can still get Anakin, the Sith Anakin, I think at this point. So oh, okay, if you cool. haven't gotten it, don't panic. I'm sure it'll come back around. They're going to sell plenty of these things. Um, they're not going to truncate their sales for for that. <laughs> no, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, hot. like you say, it's hot. It is, yeah, it. everyone is going to go nuts about it online. That's you seen. Um, especially on, on our Instagram, a lot of you know, a lot of the shots of this guy doing the rounds. Um, and it's coming out in July to September. Yeah, to that September. is you're gonna have really this in a close. month from pre order, which is unheard of. I it's it's something that's starting to happen. Um, you know, continue with the gaming thread here. Um, E3, which was uh, well, which is I should say the gaming industry's biggest yearly showcase, they're now starting to get into the routine over the last couple of years where. The big publishers that come onto the stage, they'll preview their game. And whereas, you know, in years gone by, it's a case of, you know, coming out in two, three years down the line. Now it's very much a case of, you know, you can get this in six months. Yeah. So, and that's really, you know, that's such a great feeling to know that it, there's such a short space of time between you instantly seeing it and then you getting your hands on it. And I'm hoping that's something which, you know, toy companies are going to start kind of doing, as you say, July 19th to September 19th, we will put one out. But yeah, earliest it's going to be July Um I know a lot of people are excited just to get their hands on it. Not just people who obviously, you know, know this guy from the game, but obviously the original Ben Riley um, carried on the comics. Um, right. So, and that's what I think I like about it, which you can see again in this kind of shot here, you can see the, the, the blend of the high tech undersuit with that, you know, the very basic cloth. Um, it actually looks like this logo. material that they're using is a little more flexible than some of the other stuff that they've had and it just be, it might be the nature of the texture that they wanted to get or that's built into yeah. the suit um, just looks a little more flexible looks like you could get a little more movement out of this I don't I, I thought at first there might be some toe movement too but I 
doesn't look like it from the bottom of that foot. No, it doesn't seem to be any. Yeah, like you were saying, it's a, so, something you normally get with, especially the figure arts from Bandai, where you have that kind of mid articulation point on the foot. Um, I don't know. Might just be. something. But yeah, obviously from these, we, we're not going to see. Hopefully, then we get better look at him on display. I'm, I'm sure we will when it comes to San Diego, just around the corner. Um, yeah. But again, you know, going back to the accessories, the phone there looks pretty cool. And you can see, you can't see it very well. You can see. You know, there is a screen print on there. There is some kind of information. Quite interesting to see what that is when we get it in hand. Mm-hmm. Looks to be something Spider-Man like related, perhaps a new story or yeah, YouTube, something like that. Um, someone did point out on our comments, they did say, well, how the hell is he supposed to be that? Donut, it's a good question. Not one that I'm going to answer because <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, it's that nice blend of a rustic design. The belt looks really great and kind of, you know, haphazardous and kind of slapped together. Same with the wrist, um, the wrist launchers, yep. you know, offset against you know the, the quite high tech looking undersuit so yeah um another kind of steel i suppose on hot toys um this is hot if you want this get it yeah, as soon as it yeah. comes back up because this will definitely sell out yeah most definitely um so yeah here we go just just around this one out then so this is a full look at everything you get so it's a nice hearty dose of the web effects um like i say the pizza box there um always reminds me of the neck of turtles whenever i see a pizza box now when it comes to toy shots it just seems to be synonymous with those guys people um, buy this simply for the accessories <laughs> oh yeah just for the certain- props yeah they're really cool yeah, they're um the you know, coffee yeah yeah, really well from done. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how detailed that camera is as well. Obviously, you can't really see it so well there just in his hands. But yeah. again, you know, as, as the figures themselves improve, yeah, the accessories obviously are coming along leaps and bounds as well. Um, which you need exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, hopefully you will, mate. Hopefully you will. I'm sure you will, um, which means you definitely will. Um, so <laughs> let's jump across and just bring it back over our last three topics. Like, like we said, this is Spider-Man Month here at Exclu. Um, we're currently in our Rogues Gallery Week on social media. Um, so that's why we just put these three together just to open today's show. Just to recap, so the advanced suit, again, you're looking at July to September this year. Um, there's no set month yet for the egg attack um, figure. They've just listed it as a Q4. Obviously, we'll keep you updated as, as when we have more information just on that. time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas, of course. Hopefully, we will see more of them at Toy Fair. Um, I'm not too sure whose booth they'll be under. I'm sure it'll be a distributor um, for the United States. But obviously, again, something we'll update you on. Um, and yeah, the Scarlet Spider, who we've just uh, spoken about. Again, another July, September release. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, um, just around the corner. So also in the news, I mean, not a day goes by where, you know, there isn't something revealed. Hot Toys... Um, Naturally, they timed their Spider-Man releases with our Spider-Man month. Obviously, we are trendsetters in that regard. Um, so, I mean, I think it was last week, every day, there was something new from these guys, which yeah. is great, you know, for collectors. It's always great to see. Um, they have shown off what they're calling the movie promo edition of um, the homecoming. Let's just call it what it is. The homecoming um, suit there. Yeah. I mean... They're obviously, you know, they're looking at it so far from home. It's a movie promo edition. I mean, what are your thoughts on that tactic? Would you rather they just come up and say, hey, this is a re-release? Or are you quite happy for them to kind of slide it under another it's, heading? That's not what they do. They, you know, they're going to come out with something and they're going to just going to take away a few accessories, add a couple different ones and yeah. call, it a, call it another product, basically. That's, that's the Hot Toys way. But yeah. uh, I'm kind of glad of this because um, I didn't pick up the uh, Homecoming one. And oh, okay. I might grab this it's kind of nice to be able to to do that not that you can't find it on the aftermarket for a fairly decent price um but it's just nice to be able to you know pick up a new one if you don't mind yeah, yeah. of course i mean yeah I, I guess that's the main the main come away point isn't it really that you know if you had this the first time around i mean that's fine you can snooze on it it doesn't matter but yeah, yeah. if you didn't get this the first time around you don't want to be searching aftermarket you'd perhaps you know uh, perhaps you're someone who perhaps doesn't like to do that you know when it comes to you know, trust reasons. I know a lot of people perhaps don't like to purchase. They'd rather just buy from the official vendors. There we go. Job done. You've got something which you're happy with. Right. This is now going to be your chance to, to do that. Um, so again, they've got this guy down. This All this information I'm now about to read out is from um, sideshow.com. So they've got this guy down again, another July, September 19 um, release. It's going to be $204. So slightly under, um, which again, um, price. Yeah, again, to be expected, I suppose, for a reissue, essentially. And again, a nice little incentive for those who did miss the boat the first time around, you know, for them to now jump on. Um, So we're just going to leapfrog back to gaming, essentially, as we look at the Pure Arts 
um, quarter scale Altair. Now, this guy looks absolutely insane. He debuted at E3 last weekend. Um, he's a poly resin a statue, and you can see the details there. Um, we have a full gallery of this guy on our site. Uh, yeah, so essentially, they're, they're calling this the Animus um, version. As you can see, he's kind of materializing um, the little blue hexagonal effect there. Um, looks to be incredible. Pure art, I'll admit, not a platform that I'd heard of previously. I just saw this guy pop up um, during E3, something else that obviously I'm really into. Um, yeah, just the detail they've packed into this guy is pretty staggering. Um, statues is another whole, you know, it's another whole world, essentially. Um, not a world that I am myself embedded in, so I can't really, you know, say too much more about it. What about yourself? Have you got any statues in your collection? I, uh, I do have the Ralph McQuarrie statue, Vader oh, nice. statue from oh, Sideshow. Yeah. And it's, it's something that it was kind of a, you know, I, somebody was selling it for a decent price and I grabbed it. It's, yeah. not, it's not my thing. I mean, the posing, obviously there's just no posing. So. Yeah. But Star Wars is, you know, I got a lot of collectibles around Star Wars. So something like that yeah. just fits in without having to get nuts with, with the statue. <laughs> yeah. they, they scare me. Yeah. Frankly, I, I fear dropping them. Um, yeah, true. But this is beautiful. These aren't the same guys who did the Wonder Woman, are they? That bust? No. Uh, I don't think so. No, these are a yeah. different, yeah, a different company. Um I've amazing seen amazing stuff coming out though. I mean, there's amazing stat statues are looking better and better. All yeah, and that's the thing. From from when we first started Exclude back in the end of 2016, which I mean, I mean that's that last three years in itself. But back, yeah, so back from then to now, when you look at statues, you look at XM Studios, you got Iron Studios. Yes, you've got some sideshow pieces. You've now got Pure Arts, and you know all the other companies that I'm completely forgetting now. I'm trying to think of them who are all outputting these different lines, you know, um, and they're all doing it to such a great standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 General Giant, of course. Um, so it's becoming more competitive. They're becoming, you know, more mainstream. People are becoming more aware of them. Like I said, I think I would be a bit afraid to kind of, yeah, to drop them, to kind of chip a bit <laughs> off. And that I mean, the Karabuki stuff where it's, where it's uh, what is that, 12th scale? Or that's like 8th scale, 1 8th, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So I think they do have stuff, stuff, I, can, I feel I could put on a shelf, like a glass shelf in a detail or something, and it's not going to, I've just seen that one picture that I'm certain sure everybody's seen of all those statues. Oh yeah. Last oh. <laughs> and that I was, just Oh man. Uh, yeah, that's the terrifying, terrifying thought. Yeah, so the Cobra Kia ones, I've got um the black and gold Python Iron Man. Um nice. but because they are plastic as opposed to, you know, a poly resin as this guy is. Like you say, the fear factor is just gone. You know, it's just gone. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, having someone like this on display, a little chip, anything right. like that, you'd kind of be terrifying. Right. Right. Um, so this guy, yeah, like I say, he's uh, he debuted at E3. Um, he's going to be available in October of this year. Um, the listing price is six hundred and eighty-eight dollars. So again, you know, you look at other reason I'm not in the statues. <laughs> get, yeah, um, and it's a lot of money to put out there on just one, you know, one collectible. But hey, if you've got the money, if that's you, then fantastic. Yeah, um, you know, I love seeing pictures of people's setups when they have those statues mm -hmm. all lined up. They look, they are just so gorgeous when they're displayed, you know, nicely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's jump down the page now. So we have the next edition to Marvel, um, to the, well, I should say the Hasbro Marvel 80th anniversary line of Marvel Legends. Um, so GameStop have been running a promotion where essentially they've been, revealing what's coming next by in-store flyers so that's when we first saw this guy someone just literally took a picture of the flyer a few days later of course we got the official image uh, from hasbro so this is the agent anti-venom so for all intents and purposes this does just look to be a repaint essentially of the existing figure um i will say though the detail especially on the shoulders the wrist and the chest that looks pretty damn sweet for a legend um some legend, well, I mean, legends are kind of hit and miss. Some guys are really detailed in the sculpt work, especially. Other guys are, you know, woefully lacking. This guy here looks to be, you know, one of the better ones. Um, is anything taking your interest from the Marvel 80 line so far? This, not at all. I don't even know what the hell this is, honestly. I mean, I honestly haven't kept up with comics for a long time. Uh, yeah. Certain things, Walking Dead and things like that. But, I, you know, I used to read Marvel. I've got thousands of them, but... Yeah. I've never heard of this 
Agent Anti-Venom, I'm personally venomed out, you know what I mean, a little bit. You know, I like the original character and stuff. Um, so it doesn't hold any interest for me. I've heard other people talk about it and it's kind of a lukewarm reception to it. So we'll see. I think, yeah, I think there's there's so many of these Marvel, of, of these AE Earth legends coming out, yeah. both in the retro cardback series and, you know, the standard... Um, the sets that are there's some great ones out there i mean yeah so, much, so far you can stretch your money and there's some great stuff that's this is the thing the set so yeah so the, the marvel studios first 10 year sets that came out i want to say summer autumn last year um there's some really cool stuff the ant-man and the yellow jacket was really cool obviously some weren't so great you got the Thor and the lady sif which i have mm -hmm. both competent figures was anybody screaming for those figures to be made? Not really. Um, and I've seen countless images since then of them being heavily discounted. Uh, obviously, being in the UK, not so much. But in the States, I see, you know, pictures in groups I'm in, um, you know, closer to you guys where, yeah, they're heavily discounted. Yeah. So I wonder if... That, I mean, it's stuff coming out, though. The the X, the uh, Wolverine Hulk looks really good. The Hulk's yes, that looks awesome. Yeah. Wolverine looks um, great. Uh, the Colossus uh, and uh, Juggernaut looks Yeah, really man. Cool. Yeah, those two heavy hitters together looks bloody yeah. awesome. But again, that would perhaps be my my concern is how well are they going to shift when they're actually out there in the wild? Because I, again, I feel as though the MCU 10 ones were, were well received when they were previewed. Mm. Yep. And then, I don't know, man, whether they just didn't re you know, resonate enough with collectors at the time. I don't know. There was some, like I say, that were really cool. The Red Skull Hydra Pack was really cool. Yeah. Hopefully, the Marvel 80 Legends will do a bit better. You know, we never want to see any line, you know, fail because ultimately, as collectors, we're the ones who are going to be missing out because it means, you know, attitudes are going to change, you know, behind the scenes. So, fingers crossed, the 80 stars does go down well. Uh, we get to see more of those in the future. Um, it's, it's just a nice way for them to bring out carriers that otherwise would probably never, you know, never get made. Um, so maybe we're gonna shouldn't be made. I don't know. Maybe shouldn't. Yeah, let's just uh, see how it goes. Um, so we're gonna jump across to another hot toys. I mean, you can't escape them. You just you just can't. Um, trying to put this show together, you realise just how dominant they are at the minute when it comes to news. Like I said, not a day goes by and there isn't something hot toys to talk about. So yes, this is the Star Lord. Um, again, let's just call it what it is. It's largely a reissue of the volume of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume yep. Two figure. They did say, that, however, that it is a newly painted head sculpt. So we had a comparison piece recently on our social media, which you can check out on our Instagram page, at Exclude Collective, where we just put the two side by side, just to kind of give you guys a bit of an idea. Um, yeah, they are very, very difficult to tear up. To, uh, they they say that with every Captain America they came out with. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, we did see it's them. It's the same sculpt. You just maybe painted it slightly differently. <laughs> and it's always so hard to tell from these promo shots you know those differences yeah when once we have them in hand then okay maybe it's easier to kind of compare the two yeah. but from these shots you know if they're saying oh it's a slightly different skin shade you can't tell because of the lighting I mean, in this case out. it doesn't really matter he hasn't aged that much in the movies uh no of course that's the thing so they, they, you know yeah they they completely can get cap, away with it you know what i mean yeah. like there was some definitely differences in hair hairstyle and you know he's aged a little bit since the, since it started uh but this this is good this is another thing that i never picked up and you know because i had an anti uh, no marvel rule right and, yeah uh, that's slowly disintegrating so yeah. <laughs> but they'd be able to pick him up um, but yeah, so Hot Toys, they've come out and they said that this guy is going to be available um, between October and December 2020. So everything else that we've talked about so far is, you know, just around the corner. This guy, not so much. Um, there are some pretty cool accessories here. You have the bubble effect um, from his blaster and, of course, the Doctor Strange portals that you see during the attack on Titan. Um, something which I have then kind of thought about, would you ever... Obviously, being a one-six collector, would you be okay with Hot Toys releasing accessory packs solely for characters like Star Lord, who movies oh, to movie so, changing? You know, obviously the, the Iron Man. Okay, they can do that because you know that's Iron Man. But characters who aren't changing, you know, how do you feel about that? Oh well, if if you've uh, if you're a one-six collector and you've listened to the one-six pack, and I highly recommend you do if you haven't. Of course. Um, we've talked about this numerous times. This is right. something that they should do. They did it for Iron Man. I mean, it's a natural fit for Iron Man because of all the, especially the nano um, 
articles that he had in the last movie. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, come on, guys. You could charge us $150 for a, a head and some, you know, extra pieces, and you'd easily sell things. So, like, they're missing out on, I think, a whole market there because um, people would definitely buy. I, I realize you want to sell a full new figure, but even if it's just, you know, a new gun, you know, or, uh, you know, a, a different sculpt with a different expression on it or something like that. I yeah. would. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's definitely a case to be made with someone like star who is a bit more high profile. You know, yeah. he's a popular character. I understand perhaps on the ones who aren't, you know, they are who aren't so popular, but someone like star he's at the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully someone we'll see down the line. I'm not too optimistic. It's going to happen. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. More and more people, other people do it. Asmus uh, releases heads. Like if you bought something and they've yeah, still improved the head and you can literally just buy the, the sculpt to improve your, you know, and some people will say, well, why wasn't it this good to begin with? But I'm happy to buy just the head and not a whole new figure two years from now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you've improved your technique or your paint or your sculpt. Give it to me, man. I'll pay 75, 80, $200 for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just to recap, this is the first little roundup. So, yeah, new Spider-Man, the pretty damn awesome quarter scale Altair. We've got Agent Anti Venom Marvel Legends on the way and a new Star Lord from Hot Toys. So, let's have a take a closer look. So, we are going back to Beast Kingdom for this one. So, this week we've seen two new reveals. So, this here is the Magneto figure, which is obviously a continuation of their X Men line. So far, we've seen um, Cyclops, Wolverine. I believe we saw some. Jean Grey Phoenix um, ones yep. on display at Toy Fair. So a line they're very much committed to. Um, there are two different variants here. There is, of course, you know, your standard, uh, your, your standard base one, I should say, and a DX version, which you can see on your screen oh, really? right now. So the DX one is coming with a different head sculpt. Um, the little, the eyes there, you can see the white eyes when he's, you know, then using his powers. Um, and it's pretty awesome to see as well, actually, the little uh, effects around his hands are magnetic. They were, you know, they are kind of disclaiming. I was, gonna, I was wondering that with the paper clips. I'm like, that'd yeah. be really cool if they were actually were magnets and you could just clip anything you wanted to them. That'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much they can hold. They are disclaiming, you know, saying there's only really small stuff, you know, naturally. Yeah. But it's a nice little touch, you know, it's something which just works so well. Um, and I think the coolest thing that you get with this DX is the base. I mean, you can't see it too well in the promo shots. Again, they haven't really shown it off. It's a bit kind of, a bit dark. But yeah, you do get that kind of mangled street scene um, for him to stand on looks fantastic interesting to see what he's actually made of um, and the quality of that in hand but it's a nice touch and hopefully you know we'll start to see that come through with more of these figures um, more themed bases would be nice uh, so you can then kind of put them together to make a cohesive scene um, but yeah so another another Beast Kingdom figure on the way so you get Again, two heads with the regular version and three with the DX is that what yes that yeah um, and that kind of angry sculpt um, yeah, it is with this guy as well. So yeah, this guy's coming out in, again, they haven't put a specific month. They've just got it down for the fourth quarter um, of this year. So again, something to look forward to if you are into this stylized collectible. And like I say, it's a pretty safe bet to say we'll see more of this guy on display um, at this year's San Diego Comic-Con. And speaking of which, there's a nice natural segue as we look. So this is not a breaking news story. It's something that's been doing the rounds for a while. You know, it's not something new. But it's kind of been touched on recently, um, thanks to Sideshow's blog, where they've been steadily revealing, you know, their exclusives for the convention this year. Um, and it's turned out that Neon Tech 2.0 is actually going to be a Comic Con exclusive. Previously, it was just listed as an exclusive. We didn't really know, you know, the full ins and outs of that. Of course, um, you had, as you can see, the, the shot on the left is from your gallery up on our site. So I put it in there just to kind of get your thoughts, really. So what did you make of the 1.0 release? Is it something you'd happily get the 2.0? Or is, you know, is one of these guys fine? Uh, one, one is more than enough, I think. I think that sound bite there is a very good way, yeah, just to sum this all up. Yeah. Me, but I mean, you know, Iron Man collectors will, you can pretty much slap anything on there and they will love this. And, and they're, it is cool. I mean, the one, the first one is very cool looking. It's just... I don't know. It's it's not my cup of tea. It's like it's great. It's a great Iron Man figure. Um, the neon stuff is cool, especially if you've got the UV light over it. Yeah, this uses a different light, so I don't even know if you can display them together. I think you need a like either a black light. Some there's another type of light that you needed for the the 2.0. I think so. I don't. Right. Know, you have to have them both in the in the shelf. But um, 
Yeah, there, I, I think the two of them together, I mean, I loved Tron, and, and this is an obvious, you know, hit yeah, you in the yeah. head uh, reference to Tron um, with both the colors. So it would kind of be cool to display them together. And I'd think about it if I had more attachment to the first one, but... Uh, yeah, I think yeah. with these, they're interesting to see what they look like in a natural light situation, because, yeah, you know, great. like you say, that's yeah. the thing. If you don't have the lights, you know, you, you literally just want to chuck this up in your detail and just have it there with your other Iron Man figures, you know, is it going to be a striking, you know, I mean, that's pretty, you know, safe assumption that it probably isn't. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little bit of tidbit for you guys. This will be a Comic-Con um, exclusive, which hopefully then we can kind of see um, when the event kicks off next month. So we now have a closer look at the end game Hulk. Now we did have a look at this on our social media recently. Um, since then, Diamond Select have shown off their, uh, their figure. I mean, again, I say that I use the word shown off. I mean, Diamond Select are perhaps one of the biggest culprits when it comes to um, when it comes to showing off the figures because they don't always use, you know, the best um, the best images, let's say. Um, so interesting to see out of these three, which is the more popular once they are all out and they're all in hands. Um, so yeah, obviously we start with the Bandai one. Again, it was tricky to get this comparison together because there isn't an image of the Hasbro one front on, essentially. Um, probably for a reason. Probably for a reason. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, of course, the way things work, companies, they get concept art, they get these things way ahead of release. So, of course, they're working on a completely different character look, you know, completely different design. And, of course, that changes, you know, from them working on it to when it releases, um, which I think has happened very much with the Bandai one. I mean, that head sculpt... Yeah, I, I don't really know where they're pulling that from, you know, in terms of anything current because the hair is kind of wrong. The face sculpt is just a bit odd, just a bit. I don't want to look at it Talk too long. The Bandai one? The Bandai one, it's just a bit off-putting. Um, the Hulk one, uh, sorry, the Hasbro Hulk does seem to be a bit more fun, a bit more kind of playful, a bit more mischievous in that sculpt. It's, you know, it's a pretty competent sculpt. Um, the Diamond Select one, it, it's got the likeness there, but it's just a bit dead inside. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just a I have to disagree completely. My, <laughs> out, of this okay, three, out of these three, I would say the Bandai one at least looks the most like Mark Ruffalo in that. This Hasbro okay. thing, I don't know what's going on there. That it, it looks, he's got a five head. I don't know where that extra forehead came from. <laughs> yeah. Like Robin Williams is the Hulk or something. I don't know yeah. what's going on. It's, that's a total no for me. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. not even worth. And Diamond Select, I don't know. It, it's like a, it's like as if there was a Ken doll was you know was a Hulk. I don't know. It just doesn't. I mean, like, yeah, it's got more thing. likeness than Hasbro, but it just has no life to it. Yeah, it, just, it looks just very, very on the generic. Eyes. Just very generic to me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, like I said at the, at the top of this piece, um, Diamond Slate, they are, uh, you know, they are one of the culprits, um, unfortunately, when it comes to how they show off their figures. Now, mm -hmm. when you have their figures in hand, mm -hmm. you mean, I will champion them all day long because, you know. Yeah, they have some good last, stuff. Yeah. yeah, last year, we talked about it at the, at the uh, Toy Awards at the end of last year. The Disney Store exclusive comic book Thanos. I mean, that's one of my favorites. It's a mm -hmm. nice, beefy, chunky figure. You know, it's got all the weight to it, all the personality. But when they show it off in the promo pics, you know, it, it, it doesn't carry any of that. Yeah. And they really need to step their game up because Hasbro, of course, they absolutely have that scale down. You know, they have it down to a T. It, it is the mainstream, you know, line. Yeah, the lighting is not doing any service on this shot. But, um, you know, maybe they're better with the comic book stuff. I don't know. I, I, have to, I have to go back and look and see what they've done. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can revisit this once all these three figures are out. Hopefully we can revisit it once you have them all in hand to get the same lighting across all three, you know, the same perspective. Um, like I said, the Hasbro one in the middle there, it's a bit of a pain purely because there is not a, yeah, a straight on. I'll give it credit for, for doing some expressions, you know what I mean? And, and at least yeah. giving it a little bit of personality. And where, there's, you know, there's the there's obviously being or... the, the builder fig, there is another head sculpt as well, isn't there? That's part of the wave. Right. Um, so again, you know, not right. just that one. No, true, it doesn't. Um, so yeah, that's just something we just wanted to, put in just to kind of see what you guys thought so if you have any opinions on this do you feel free to drop them in the comments like i say hopefully when these guys are out we can get them all together again and just break them down a bit more clearly um hopefully we have more of these as well in the future i mean it's always interesting just to compare between the brands 
yes, there's points we had on price point, you know, availability, all of that. But, you know, just for someone who just wants an end game Hulk figure, I mean, some people are diehard when it comes to, right, I'm only going to get Marvel Legends. Other people are happy to mix and match depending on who it is. But like I said, this is something we can revisit later on in the year. Um, so we're just going to jump ahead now to a kind of retrospective piece here. So it is a very obvious question we know. Whatever happened to the Hot Toys Vulture that we did see on display at last year's Comic-Con? I mean, it looked absolutely insane. I mean, the picture quality here isn't fantastic purely because there were no, obviously, official um, release images in the same sense that there would be had the figure came out. Um, what were your thoughts when you very first laid eyes on this guy? Oh, and I very first laid eyes on it. I was like, this is a buy, man. This this is one of those things, again, I have a, I had a no Marvel rule, and this is one of those things that I was like, you know what? This could pull me out of that because just the sheer massiveness of this and the detail in the wings. Yeah. I was like, this is just going to be too cool looking to pass up, you know? And uh, I yeah, was yeah. considering getting a Spider-Man. I probably would have, but... Uh, it's just the intricacy yeah, on those wings that you can see here. It, they shocked. just it look like, so... Incredible. Yeah. I can't believe they're even making this. And of course, that's probably why they didn't. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, it's like we said, you know, it's like we said a few nights ago when we last spoke. I mean, it's crushing that we know somewhere in the world right now that figure is sat somewhere on display, wings out. Um, you know, yeah. someone had the privilege of seeing that guy. Yeah. The rest of the world, not so much. Um, it just, it just looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, it obviously, you know, this question lends itself to a bigger narrative, which you will get to uh, you know, yeah. at the end well, of today's like, show. What happened but, to the Death Squad commander? What happened to Poe? Yes, yeah, so there's what a lot. Yeah, I mean, I know you are Arrow a champion Joker, of the. Yeah, I know you, you do champion the Poe cause quite a lot, but it is, it is interesting to see, you know, from from Hot Toys which characters they do push forward, which other ones they then, you know, kind of quietly hide under the rug it, i always find it interesting to, to know that this image that we sourced for this from sideshow.com it's still up there it's still very much part of their blog from last year's comic-con mm -hmm. so it's never a case i think with hot toys where they kind of sweep it under the rug completely and they take yeah. down any official it's still very much a thing of here it is the Romero shot of the Joker from the 66 Batman is still floating around on there and maybe even yeah. on hot toys um you know, the Poe tease was like a look for it soon. Literally, like, look for it soon. Yeah, I saw your post not long ago. Yeah, well, um, this post never, long ago, this never you? came yeah. to New York, look for it soon. I, I've seen them show a lot of stuff at the shows at, at San Diego, at, at New York Comic Con, at Toy, yeah. Con, Toy Fair. But um, that you, you, you know, you look at it and you go, this is never going to see the light of day. But when you tell me on your Facebook page that, you know, look for it coming soon, <laughs> like, I'm going to look for it coming. <laughs> yeah, of course. And that hasn't course. happened as much as some of this stuff too. Cause they've never, they never featured this as a teaser on their Facebook. No, no. Instagram or anything like that. It was just like, here it is. Look at it. Isn't, isn't it cool? Let's, let's gauge the interest of while we're still figuring out the price here, which I think is what happened, happened to Bayes uh, from Rogue One. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, Probably no. maybe, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem any more expensive to make than a Dengar or a Boba Fett in terms of the accessories. So I really don't know what happened there either. I think it would have been a, a decent seller. Lots of people like Rogue One. These yeah. In the MCU just don't seem to, I don't know, they... But I mean, yeah, it's the thing, isn't it? it? It does then obviously lend itself into the bigger picture of specifically Hot Toys when it comes to stuff they're teasing, but also when it comes to MCU villains, yeah. um, which we touched upon the other day as well, you know. Yeah. Of course, you have your Loki. There are a few others. I'm now going to forget when I try and think about them. But there are a few other, of course, Thanos. Well, they had but, Ultron. They had. Yeah. Uh, I think they got burned on the first Avengers movie with all the. Um, uh, what, what was the what were the Chitari? name? Chitari. The, the Chitari. Yeah. When yeah. those things were left over for years and yeah, probably still you can still buy them. I think probably. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Maybe they got gun shy there, which is an odd thing. I mean, it's like you know that they know the market. They know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they haven't gone it, further. With it's the it. thing. It'd be great to see. I know people always say about a yellow jacket. Um, again, yellow a jacket. nice, intricate figure. Ironmonger I mean, never got made, right? Ironmonger. Um, I'm trying to think. I saw something else. Um, um, somebody else was saying about how cool it would be. Yeah, yeah, that'd be hard. Oh, I mean, man. it's only in there briefly, but I would probably have 
bought crossbones. Yeah, where you can imagine, yeah, with you know the full mask, the full mask head sculpt, and then you know the damaged one as well with his face yeah. all burned up. Yeah. That would be really awesome to see. Um, I did see somebody else on Facebook the other day when they were kind of chatting about this same topic. Um, they said, "How cool would it be to see an Ultron figure from the very first appearance when he's inside, essentially the Iron Legion um, figure?" So something mm -hmm. like that would yeah. be really cool. See yeah. those kind of niche. Um, fleeting character appearances they lend themselves quite nicely to to show exclusives where yeah. the, perhaps the batch is a bit smaller the price is a bit more expensive I mean we are entering well we are you know very much in Comic Con season so hopefully we can might see some of those um, wish list you know boxes ticked off obviously only time will tell um, but yeah I mean this just just a kind of little fun segment here we wanted to drop into the show today just to kind of explore a few topics, just a bit of fun. I mean, Hot Toys Vulture, it's pretty safe bet this will never see a full release. I mean, hey, they could turn around tomorrow and say, hey, it's coming out and everyone will be over the moon because it well, looks fantastic. Listen, then maybe someday there's a Sinister Six movie, you know, um, when they get to that point and who knows. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that would just be insane. Um, but yeah, so that's wrap that one up and another one of our brilliant transitions in play there so this is another little um news roundup so we have three um stories one purely from today to the, the day of recording so another marvel 80 um release from hasbro it is the comic hulk um now this guy get ready for it 34.99 i should say us dollars no. he is going to be available at hasbro's booth during the event they have stated that he will also be available after the show via Hasbro Pulse, which oh, seems to be the way they do things now. For quite a while, I'm going to say. And Yeah, and also at Select Overseas Convention, obviously being here in the UK, hopefully that means when MCM London rolls around, we can expect to see him. I know we're going to be getting a lot of the Black Series ones that they showed off at the Celebration. So, I mean, we kind of chatted briefly before coming on air about this. I mean, we should this also point out this guy comes with a crushed pipe I yes. mean, if you're sitting there right now and you can't fathom why this guy is 34 99 it's because he comes with a crushed pipe. I mean, it's a highly detailed crushed pipe, too. No, this, I mean, is, it, this it, is just no bueno, man. I, I don't know what they're thinking here, especially for $34. I mean, it's not it's not a good-looking Hulk, man. It's not no. even a good-looking comic Hulk. He's got kind of a pinhead. It's very odd. I don't know. Uh, I won't be picking it up. I mean, I've seen a lot of talk, and people are saying, I'm going to bother standing in line, you know, they probably will, you know, they'll, they'll be, yeah. I, I know I'll see a line when I get there for this. Yeah, yeah, of course. $34 blew my mind. It, it's a lot, but yeah, it is, it is another um, of the Marvel 80 um, figures. Obviously this guy is, you can't really see too well here, but we do have a full gallery on our site um, where he is part of the carded um, line, the card back line on the right. blister packs. So obviously to get this guy out, I would have to be very, uh, crafty like i was with a scalpel or you just rip it open depending on how you are with these things um now this middle story here this is going to test us because this is i'm going to say the name it's cyrax or kyrax i don't know i'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if i got that wrong it is part of storm collectibles 112th mortal combat line now the license has had something of a, of a renaissance. Obviously, more Combat 11 launched not too long ago. So, I mean, Storm Collectibles have always had that relationship with the line, with the franchise. They do Street Fire as well. They have a few Mike Tyson figures. So, very much fighting oriented um, line. Again, this is just a continuation of that. Um, he's yeah. due out in October of this year. Um, all the information on this guy um, is available on our site. So, you can head over and check that out. I will put all the links. Uh, but everything from the show down in the comments below in case you do want to check it out so i mean not too much more we can say about that um basically um, from this guy they do have a track record of making pretty solid figures so again fingers crossed this is another solid release from them cool so we're gonna cool yeah it's, it's another cool looking guy um the articulation on these is the main selling point especially with a fighting character you know you can get all those poses you can really knock it out of the park um so it's one which we always enjoy seeing what the community you know does with these figures once they're in hand um but we are just going to chuck it over to the mezco release i'm gonna let you take this one because obviously you picked this guy up today ordered, ordered. so well yeah i should say ordered not picked up order so what made you flip the switch on this guy you know i don't know i'm not a big mezco collector i have the popeye um i did was lucky enough to go to toy fair and pick up the gomez and the blade yep. 
uh, which are cool and they're, they're great figures. I did a little work for them in the back. They're, they're great. They look great. I did pick up the Batman though, the recent Batman. And yep. um, I figured, you know, if I'm going to do anything with it, I also picked up the recent Joker. Um, it was the one I shot for part, part of this, the, the, the images for them. Yeah. So if I got Batman and Joker, I may as well have a Gordon. I can actually do something with these things and shoot them. Um, so, and it's cool. I mean, it's got the, you know, it's got the, um, it's got the light with it. Yeah. So yeah, like you say, come, come to the light. It's a summer uh, Mezco exclusive. Um, he was available. Uh, we, we are recording this video way after he has uh, yeah, sold out went, essentially. Uh, half an hour. It went half. Yeah. So yeah, it's a half an hour. He was up for 125 um, US dollars. <laughs> so, I mean, like we always say, Mezco, they've got this down to a T. Here's the figure. Here's the pre-order date. Oh, it's sold out. Job Market done. the show. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Job done. Um, yeah. You know, like you say, it's cool to have the bat signal, and you know, you obviously be more creative with what you do. It is going to lend itself quite nicely, yeah. you know, to that setup. Two heads. He's um, got an older look, a younger look, which is oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, he's got two heads. One's a little more gray, um, and you know, all these type of accessories. The he's got the uh, he's got like a, uh, a vest um, with some, you know, like a walkie-talkie and some cool accessories. It's going to look great. Um, the sculpt is okay. We'll see. You know, it's, it's all right. It's not one of the most. Yeah. Cool yeah. Things. The glasses are a little thick, but I don't know. I, I think it was cool and it went for an and a half an hour. So I guess it was a good thing to, to grab. This is the thing that they're always popular. They're always selling out, you know, um, whether it's in half an hour or a couple of hours, it's still, you know, pretty close to when it goes, you know, when it comes available, they don't tend really to hang around. Um, yeah, so this is just a second round up today's show. So like we say, we've got a new Hulk on the way from Hasbro. We have a new Mortal Kombat figure from Storm Collectibles. And we have a new Mezco uh, Jim Gordon figure on the way, which leads us into the final point of the first exclude show here on YouTube. So the final thought. So we're going to pull together what we've just spoken about with Vulture. Um, again, we're going to look back to our social media where we asked you guys a question will we see a 1-6 Mysterio from Hot Toys? Is it on the cards? You know, Spider-Man is now looking to be the next Iron Man for these guys. Well, surely he needs some villains. I mean, what better place to start than with an MCU Mysterio? Um, things could tie together very nicely here. The film is out um, here in the UK. It's July 2nd. I'm not sure if that's the same for you guys in the States. I imagine it is. Um, and also Comic-Con later that month. So it could be a really nice reveal around the time of the film. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think we are going to see one? And if we will see it, will it release? Yeah, that's the big question. Um, it's true that uh, the, the, the closeness of San Diego could be a factor in why we haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah. Because there's nothing secretive about it. We've seen the entire, you know, suit and everything. So it's not like they want to keep it under wraps. So there's no reason Hot Toys wouldn't have put it out as a pre-sale like they did with Spider-Man. But there's yeah. also the stealth suit that's coming from the new movie that we've seen on Spider-Man. So I'm sure that that's yet to be revealed too. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, again, it's like a 60-40 with villains, I think, from, from Hot Toys. But due to the fact that it's Jake Gyllenhaal, um there's the ability to do the unmasked you know unhelmeted head sculpt yeah. helmeted head sculpt with some cool lighting effects in there uh very much in the iron man vein you know on the chest and in the head yep. like that I, I can't see how they'd pass this up i mean it's very the thing about it is you know they're also looking at the asian market as well as the european and yeah, american market and it's very much plays into that look and feel that goes over big in the Asian market, you know, almost a robotic superhero. -y. It's kind of, you know, it's not Cayman Rider, but it's got that look, you know I mean? That armor yeah, that totally, yeah. and light yeah. up and it, it plays into that. Um, whereas the, you know, something like the vulture just totally didn't, uh, didn't have any of those except for the mechanics of the wings. So yeah, I guess, and uh, I think, I think there's a 70, I think I'm going to give it a 75% chance this is going to get made. I I think they're going to quickly need to have something to yeah, show. Yeah, what else are you going to release from that movie? You know, well, I mean? this is the thing. If you're looking at Homecoming, well, you don't just, have anything you know, for a long time. You know, well, this is the long. thing. You know, you have we have Homecoming. We have his appearance in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have the Avengers films. 
and now we obviously have Far From Home. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to pair the Iron Spider with Thanos. Okay, brilliant. But what about the other suits? So you've got the, you know, the tech suit, uh, the Stark suit, I should say, which obviously would pair nicely with the Vulture. Um, mm -hmm. We've also got, you know, the black and red suit from Far From Home. You've got the stealth suit, the black suit. So there's all these figures which we, I'm sure, will get made by Hot Toys. The stealth suit is, you know, it's coming, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. There needs to be something, a villain to pair that with, you know, in your collection, if you are more creative or if you are just going to put them in the detail, of, you know, I think there's going to be a case where it's very quickly going to become a lot of MCU Spider-Men and then no villains to go with them beyond yeah. Thanos and the Iron Spider. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, this is, this is more in the, that vulture looking at those wings and the packaging and the construction of those was going to be an expensive prospect, I think, with yeah. the leather jacket. And, you know, I just think it was going to be, I think the price probably would have put it to a point where people would have passed on it and it would have maybe sat there. Uh, with this, I mean, you're looking at nothing more complex than came with Doctor Strange in terms of a cape. Um, yeah, true. The, only thing is, the only thing is if you want to light it up that that could get hairy maybe they won't do the full you know light up maybe they'll put it in the helmet and not in the chest or something like that that could get a little tricky but um yeah true i mean i helmet. think it's really cool looking depending on how the movie goes um if they don't you know make him totally lame uh is another I think, thing yeah I you know what i mean it's another thing that i might buy so i can't see them not making this i don't know yeah, I mean, I'd love to see it. Hopefully it's something where, you know, we are getting closer to, to July 2nd. We are getting closer to the film's release. Hopefully they just have it all planned out and we'll finish recording this. We'll go on Facebook and bam, there it is, <laughs> um, which is going to be the way with these things. Um, I can totally see this as an SDCC surprise release. Though. I think it, yeah, it, it leans it out. Itself, it's going yeah. to be gaining steam right at that point. It's yeah. going to be great. Which we know it's probably going to be great, or at least it's going to be well received. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, that's what what better way to do it to announce something? Exactly. Like I mean, it's it's a character great. that people have longed to see on the silver screen. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, hopefully he gets made. Hopefully he then is, you know, readily available. Whether it's just as a general release or an exclusive, I could probably see him becoming an exclusive just because he is more of a kind. Of, I don't want to use the word niche. It makes it sound like he's, you know too small but i think he definitely does have that kind of more focused appeal which a lot of the exclusives you know do yeah um, it's just limited more limited run yeah i mean so fingers crossed um as we get closer so i just have a quick look whilst i'm here as well um so reading a few your few your comments there's a lot of you guys on this you've been saying um that you don't think they will um but if you did see it it would be an instant um, pre-order Again, a few of you are agreeing with us saying that you probably will see it at Comic-Con, but I'm not sure whether it will actually get a, release, uh, a full release. Um, they, another, I'm trying to see here what else you guys are saying. Um, the other thing with that is they may tease it as they do. They may tease it like they do with the Vulture just to gauge opinions and things like that. And they, we may or may not see it even if you see it at SCT, SDCC. In tr yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, so I mean, again, someone kind of echoing that. They're saying that they think they'll tease it. Um, same way they did with the Yellow Jacket, Crossbones, Ultron Sentinel, Vulture, the Ancient One. Is that I mean, Tom? That was not Tom. <laughs> um, Tom here, I mean, I have wanted to, obviously, a uh, team member here at Exclu, um, he is saying that we'll see it at Comic-Con. He's going to put money on it, so that means that means you all need to hold into that. Okay, this is Tom. He's saying he is going to put money on it. Will it ever release, though? Probably not. Yeah. So um, he's not too confident we'll actually see it in the flesh um, for sale, at least. But yeah, so just a nice way to round off the first show um, here on our YouTube channel. It's something that we hope to be able to put up um, at least once a week. Um, it all depends on, obviously, the news around Comic-Con. We'll obviously be more active with the news. Um, and obviously, this is a great pair to go along with our 1-6 pack show, which obviously, Trevor, you head up, um, which we do have a latest episode, which you obviously can catch right now on our channel again everything you've seen from today's show all the links all the images you can catch everything in full on our website which is shown at the bottom of your screen but we'll also put all the links down in the description below so that's where we wrap up today for our very first episode of the exclusive show i say thank you to trevor for joining me and rambling for the last hour or so <laughs> um 
so yeah hopefully we'll see you guys again um many many thanks for watching don't forget to um subscribe give us a like if it's something you've enjoyed any feedback let us know as ever in the comments and we will catch you next time on the xu collective youtube channel cheers guys peace